Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two's very special series on Medicare and health insurance with uh, our very our new friend and special expert Aaron Zolbrod. This has been a wonderful set so far. Six videos. This is number seven. It's not the last one, so we hope you get to watch all of them when we're done and uh, tell your friends, please. So, yeah. Art, what's up for today? Well, you know, we've been getting a lot of important information, and at this point, I want to say for anybody who's now into the sixth or seventh uh, video with us, is that this is almost like going to theater because there's comedy and there's tragedy, <laughs> and we have the we have a world class performer who really knows his stuff. Uh, so uh, today, um, uh, Aaron is going to be talking to us about uh, if you have a supplement plan. And so you're missing things like dental vision and things like that, prescriptions particularly, uh, that there's a, a, a there's a, a coverage that you can get, another piece of supplement to fill in some of that gap. Uh, and uh, uh, Aaron, uh, tell us about uh, Part D uh, supplements. So I get asked this all the time, and it's funny because I'm actually going to discourage people from buying a dental and vision plan, believe it or not. Mm. Um, if I had a dollar for every time somebody who came in and bought a supplement, which doesn't come with dental vision hearing, um, or somebody bought an ACA plan, an Affordable Care Act plan, an individual plan, if they retired early or, you know, they're going to be self-employed now and they say, well, what are we going to do about dental and vision? And I say almost every time you're going to pay as you go, um, that we don't recommend buying a dental or vision plan. Um, and I tell that it, it, for 95% of the people, dental and vision plans are not a value at all. In other words, you're going to pay more out of your pocket in any three to five year period for dental and vision plans. You're going to pay more out of your pocket than what you're going to get back in claims paid. And if it worked, and if it worked the other way around, where you where everybody was getting more claims paid than they were paying in premiums, there would be no dental insurance because they'd be bankrupt. The only way they can stay in business is to pay a lot less out in claims and they're collecting in premiums, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start with dental because anybody who's ever been employed has had dental insurance. It's usually provided at no cost or little cost. You've had a vision plan that's provided at little or no cost. So whatever you benefit you get from it is just gravy. It didn't cost me anything, right? So if I get my two, you know, if I get some dental work paid for, great. However, when you leave the world of employer coverage, well, you have to pay full cost for those plans. And again, that's where I'm saying you're never going to get your money out of them. So a standard dental plan from an employer looks exactly like this. You're going to get 100% coverage for two teeth cleanings and one set of bite wing x-rays every year. You're going to get one set of panoramic x-rays probably every five years. And that's paid at 100%, so it's free. But here's the thing. Two sets of X cleaning, two cleanings and one set of x-rays is literally a $200 value. That's all that you're, that's all it is. Um, so you're, you, if, if you're paying for $40 a month for dental, that's 480 bucks. You're getting $200 worth of cleanings and x-rays. Unless you get a root canal every single year, you're not winning that, that gain, right? You're going to pay out more in, in premiums than you're going to get claims. So again, Standard vision dental plan, 100% for preventative services, cleanings and x-rays, 80% for what's called restorative or basic service services, which are going to be fillings, simple extractions, and periodontal, and then they're going to pay 50% of what we call major services, root canals, crowns, um, uh, impacted teeth that need to be um, taken out that are impacted, um, that really are hard to get out. They don't just pop out. You might need to have surgery. And, and then dentures, 50%. Well, here's the kicker. The plan only covers $1,000 to $1,500 worth of benefit. So they they cut you off at $1,000 or $1,500. I just had, believe it or not, this, this beautiful smile I have is not the teeth I were born with, okay? Um, unfortunately, I had a few years in college where I didn't take real good care of them and I grind my teeth. Um, you know, I was grinding my teeth at night this past year and a half, I had to get Invisalign braces and I had to get every single, I had to get my wisdom teeth removed. I had a, I had an old um, post that was from an old football injury 
um, when I was like 13 that had to be removed because it was infected. I got every single, and then I got crowns on every single one of my teeth. Well, my insurance covered 1500 bucks one year and 1500 bucks because it went into two separate years. So I got $3,000 worth of coverage, but I paid $20,000 out of my own money because I only got 1500 a year. There is no such dental insurance guys that's going to cover that kind of work you need on your mouth. There's no dental insurance that's going to cover a mouthful of, of, of implants. We don't even get enough dental coverage to cover one implant, let alone a whole mouthful. So, uh, so you know, we remember why we have insurance. We have insurance to protect our assets, right? We have insurance to protect our homes, our cars, our health, our lives even, and to prevent from being sued. That's why we have insurance. You are not going to go bankrupt because you don't have insurance that covers 50% of a $1,200 crown. You're not gonna go bankrupt because you don't have an insurance that's gonna give you 150 bucks towards your pair of glasses. It goes completely against whatever that we have insurance for. We don't buy insurance to get new tires put on our cars, right? We just know we're gonna spend $1,000 on tires every three or four years. We don't buy insurance for oil changes. We don't buy insurance for new brake pads. We just know those are expenses that we're gonna have. The same goes true with your mouth. You're going to have oil changes, your teeth cleans and your x-rays. You're going to have tire that needs new tires that needs bought when you when you have a root canal or crown. Um, it's just it's just what happens. Do not waste your money on dental and vision guys or and there is no such thing to buy hearing aid coverage. There's just no such thing. Um, and so, you know, there might be a discount plan or whatever. They're a waste of money. You don't need it. We got to get this thing out of our head where we're brainwashed that we need insurance for dental vision and hearing. Don't need it. Don't buy it. Um, save your money. Put it away. Use it towards, you know, use it towards those costs as, as they as they come up. So, um, you know, again, if I had a dollar for everybody who wanted me to sell them a dental plan, I would have a small fortune. And I can sell them. They exist. They'll pay me commission. But I don't sell products that aren't of value to my clients. I just won't do it. Um, and I promise you, you're never going to get your money's worth out of a dental plan, a vision plan that you buy on your own. Um, as far as part D, that's prescription coverage. You know, it, people who buy supplements don't have it. If you buy an advanced plan, you get it. If you buy a plan through the Affordable Care Act, you have it. So it's covered. People on supplements need to buy part D. Now, I get asked this a lot just yesterday from a very intelligent woman. Um, well, I, I only take one medication. It's, it's four bucks without insurance. Why should I buy it buy a, buy a prescription plan? Common knowledge says, okay, I guess, but I would say to her, do you not carry homeowner's insurance because you've never had a fire? We don't, we can't predict a fire. If we could predict when our house was going to catch fire, or when we was going to get flooded, we would buy insurance two days before it happened. Well, we can't predict that. And just like we can't predict when you're going to be diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, this, and what I tell her is, listen, if you get diagnosed with cancer in May, you can't buy a prescription plan till the fall. You can't get a prescription plan that will go into effect till the following January. Oral chemo is $10,000 to $18,000 for a 30-day supply. If you got diagnosed in May and you needed oral chemo for ten grand a month, you'd have seven months where you're on your own. You'd have to pay $7,000 out of your pocket for that medication until you could get a Part D plan you know, that would start January that would cover you if you were still taking that oral chemo. And so number one, that's why you've got to have Part D. Number two is if you don't take Part D when you're first eligible, the government tax on a 1% penalty every month that you go without. So if you went 48 months without insurance, without Part D and then enrolled in it because you now needed a prescription, uh, you know, a, a brand name prescription that's expensive, they're going to charge you a 48% penalty on the average cost of a Part D plan, which is 40 bucks. So wow. you would pay $17 penalty for the rest of your life. And so again, Part D plans are as, as low as five dollars. Um, you know, most of our clients are paying eleven or twelve dollars. There's no reason to risk put that kind of risk for you know five or ten or eleven or twelve bucks, just none. So everybody should have Part D, regardless if you're taking prescriptions or not. And by the way, I will I will be uh, your poster boy for somebody who's only taking like one prescription. And why should I pay fifty bucks a month for? Part D, uh, and about two or three years later, 
uh, I started getting, you know, something for blood pressure and something for something else. And still it was minimal amounts of money. And even today, minimal amounts of money. But I recognized, because I didn't have anybody advising me. Okay, I was just, right. I read it someplace. And, and then all of a sudden I found out when I applied for it, I have Humana for uh, and the mail order and it's really great. They're terrific that way. But I'm paying probably about uh, $15 a month more than I would have paid for the same plan had I gotten years earlier. And part of it is that in your in your earlier years, uh, just like uh, insurance, um, when you have no claims, uh, they help pay for the other people in the plan, the few people that need uh, the cancer drugs I'm and sure things like works. that. The so, healthy people pay for the sick people. That's exactly how it works. Right. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to health insurance. I will say, and you know what, Art, you brought up a very good point. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make who have supplements in Part D. They don't get it checked every single year. Part D needs to be reevaluated every single year. You can change these companies every single year during annual election period. We right. do, from an, an annual election period, every single one of us agents spends every waking hour we have outside of work going on to Medicare's website, putting in our client's list of drugs, and finding out which prescription plan is going to be best for them next year. Yep. Yeah. John insurance does that. Companies are John's been doing that Listen, for years. Ins insurance I've companies done that are, every year. Yep, they, they are so slick, these insurance companies. Yeah. Part D is cyclical. So they so every year or two years or three years, there's there's another company that moves in and, and, and takes over the marketplace. Sure. And they dominate it. And then after three weeks, years, they're hoping you're gonna they're hoping, okay, we're hoping 50% of our people fall asleep at the wheel. We're gonna raise premiums 30 bucks. We're going to take a bunch of tier twos, make them tier threes, a bunch of threes, turn them into tier yep. fours and so on and so forth. Yep. And if you're not watching out by, but so, so every year we have people, we save them five, eight, a thousand dollars. They might not have changed one medication, hmm. but we say, Hey, they're not covering this medication the same anymore. Your premium went up from 15 to $45. Yeah. And so all we need to do is make one little move back to a, another plan and it saves a lot of money. And so many people, don't do that. And it's something that we do for every single one of our clients. Literally, we do like seven or 8,000 of those. That, um, that is a, a wonderful service. Uh, I have a broker who does the same thing for me every year. And I have to tell you, I've got the same drugs for the past five years, but I've never, I've switched plans every year because there's Isn't another it? plan yep. that'll give me the same drugs yep. cheaper. You've got Why? a great broker. By, just you've got you a great said. broker by John, very few of us do that for our clients. Very few. Yeah. Most brokers, they don't pay us much to do it. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah. Like I said, for, for two months, we're sitting in front, like on Sundays, I'm sitting and watching football and doing Saturdays and Sundays, I'm sitting watching football and doing these one after another, after another. I do it, you know, eight hours. I go home yeah. after a long day and, and we do them. Um, oh, I, so I, I got to tell you, it's, it's deeply appreciated because I've actually saved money not every year. Sometimes mm. it comes out about, you know, three, four dollars right. or whatever. But I've actually saved a lot of money yep. by having yep. them you, do that nice every year. That. It's nice to hear that there's other people, other brokers out there doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's important, I think, that you you took the dental and the vision and explained why they're not good values. Right. Uh, why hey, they're, they're not the insurance. If they're provided at no cost. In an advantage plan or through an employer, fantastic. Yeah. If you're paying for them, don't need it. Don't do it. So yeah. that's on the other hand, we all have heard the horror stories of how drugs can bankrupt you. No, they can. Yeah. Um, we still have a lot more to cover. What do you, What do you want to cover in the next video? We're going to talk about health insurance for people who aren't 65. Um, oh, student, yeah. you know, if you have if you have kids, um, if you're thinking about retiring early. Um, if you're, if you're an employee or an employer, um, we're going to talk about that next. And you'll yeah, include and also, there are. there are, there are some, because, uh, uh, a lot of people in our audience are having younger kids, uh, That's and they're, they're into the fifties and sixties and, uh, and they still have young kids and all of a sudden they're eligible for Medicare. So what do they do? Or even, do, grand, or even grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, if they're currently up to the age 26 covered by your policy. So we'll get into all that stuff in the next yeah, episode. Yeah, we're going to talk about that as well, Art. Yep. Good. Looking Thank you. forward to it.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.